What's going on guys? My name is Bryant Litrian. Welcome to my YouTube channel and welcome to my first video. I'm a New York City based day trader, but most importantly, forever a student of the market. I trade futures, options, and equity. Before we get to the charts, I just gotta let you guys know I'm not a certified financial advisor. I'm simply sharing information for educational purposes only. Today is July 14th, 2020, and what we have is a nice recovery in the broader markets following yesterday's extremely harsh sell-off. We had over a 2.5% drop from yesterday's high to yesterday's close, which is very significant, as well as in the NASDAQ, which is the tech sector. It was the first bearish day in which we've had in a while, but I want to really show you guys how you can come in with confidence and take short setups, even in today's market, because an A plus trade is an A plus trade. It doesn't matter which direction in which you are looking to take the trade. The video is not necessarily about support and resistance and all of the entry level uh, things you want to look out for when you're coming in as a trader, because we can't say we had this level right here, which extended out here, and we were coming up into a resistance level on the SPY, but that's not necessarily what this video is about, because coming into the day, it looked extremely bullish. What we had was this bull flag pattern that was forming. So we have, here's the pole, here's the flag. And at the at yesterday's open, we had gapped up over this level. If we take a look intraday, we'll see that it actually was this gap up. And you can't necessarily come in saying like, oh, I'm going to short just because the market is overextended because that's how shorts have continued to get burned since the rally from the March lows. If we jump right into it and what I have up here is the NASDAQ on the left-hand side, the SPY on the right-hand side. This is yesterday and today on both sides, as well as the ADD and the tick. And these are two very important market internal indicators. I do not trade without them. I have them up every single day. The ADD is the advanced declining line and pretty much without going to too much uh, details, it just shows the, the difference between how many stocks are actually going up versus how many are going down during, in this case, a three minute candle. So if there's more stocks that are going up, we will have a green candle. If there's more stocks that are going down and this is all the stocks in, in the broader market and on the, the nice see tick is pretty much showing all of the stocks on the new york stock exchange what's going on in this case every minute we want to use this mostly on a, on a minute time frame scalpers use it i use it when i'm scalping it provides information to show in, the, in in this example here this candle is just pretty much saying that for this minute there were more stocks that ticked down than there were stocks that ticked up so it's a good indicator as well as the add to allow you to pick a market direction for intraday timeframes. You're not necessarily using this for swing trade setups, but that's not what this video is about. As I mentioned, what we have here, as mentioned before, is yesterday's gap up, right? I'm not showing any previous day's action because I don't want to go into the history of support resistance. We're just talking about if you're coming in fresh, what to look out for and why can you be thinking about a potential short setup? We go back to the daily chart. I did say we had this gap up here and we were run we were running into potential heavy resistance. We can expect it to be heavy. A lot of people looking to sell up here because this is what's called an we had a gap up and this is an island gap down. It's usually a very bearish reversal signal right here on the spy. So there's a lot of people that bought up here that were thinking we we're going to get back up to the all time highs that are trapped and they've been in the red. So now that price is coming back up to here, there's a lot of people that are looking to close their position just so they don't lose any more money. That's usually what ends up happening, which is why support resistance tends to work. It's usually just the market psychology behind it. So we gapped up. But what was alarming to me was the fact that Whenever the ADD gaps up, let me just expand this and make it maximum size. The ADD is, it's a very simple indicator, which is why I liked it. But what we had yesterday is we gapped up over one of my key levels, nothing super discretionary about it. The other beauty of, the other beautiful thing about what I'm gonna show you guys today is not necessarily, I like to trade eliminating as much discretion as possible because we are human. We do like to imagine and, and believe we're seeing things that aren't actually there. If we trade with the least discretion as much as possible and we trade as robotic as we can be, we will be a lot more successful as well as we can actually build a system around non-discretionary non -discretionary signals. So the ADD, there's nothing you know uh, fancy about this level. It's just if I pull it up and I think if you just pull up like the five year, one year time frame, you'll see that every time the ADD comes up to here, we get heavy rejection. If we go to like a 10 year weekly, we see it's just the level that I put as final level because over the past 10 years, as you can see, the ADD tends to drop from there. So that's why that, that level exists. Again, non-discretionary. You can't argue with the fact that over the past 10 years, that's what happens every day the ADD comes up 
to this level. The same thing we have with the tick. So the tick in, in this case, if we gapped up and it's past my reserve reversal point, I highly encourage you guys to put both these up to get it up. It's the dollar sign ADD and dollar sign tick and put your own levels there and you'll whatever you feel comfortable with. This here, usually when the when the tick gaps, whenever the market gaps up and the tick is this high and the ADD is and the ADD is also this high, I usually come in with a little bit of caution because I wanna see if we'll get a market sell-off in the beginning of the day. What we do, what we can see here is the ADD actually started flushing from uh, this each candle, this is the three minute time frame. So we flushed all the way until 10 o'clock. So it's 30 minutes of straight, more stocks declining than advancing, alarming. What we have over here in the spies, we have this downtrend, we have this downtrend forming, and then we get this break. All right. So I'm watching that and it's it, it could be a trade to take right then and there, but it's not necessarily the trade in which I'm interested in. If you're a morning momentum scalper, so you could be waiting and watching that. It's a it's a it's a it's a good trade. More importantly, what I, what I was paying attention to was something that was alarming to me. If I pull this over here, this is the same spy, the cues we have the queue. We have the ADD and the tick. We have these two ETFs, which are also very important to watch for divergences. We had the SPXL, which is a bullish ETF. It means when the SPY goes up, this will also go up, but it's a leverage ETF. So it means it will go up more than the SPY will go up. If the SPY goes up, you know, 1%, this might go up two and a half percent to two to 3%. And then we have the UVXY, which is a bearish ETF. So in other words, once the SPY is going up, this is supposed to be going down. It kind of works the same way for thinking about the VIX, which is the VIX, which is the fair and volatility index of the market. And this is pretty much what dictates how high your implied volatility is on your options and so forth and a, and a lot of other things. But most importantly, it's really just telling you how much fear there is in the market. What was very alarming was the fact that as the SPY was, it gapped up, the, the VIX never showed any weakness which was very concerning for, for, for me as if you're looking for a long setup. And as we can see here, the VIX was uptrending for the entire day. And if we go back to UVXY again, which is the bearish ETF, in the morning, we had the same, we had this uptrend forming. That's a divergence right there. We had SPY also going, after we, after we broke up here, the SPY was continuing to go up and then we had this uptrend. What we would normally see is this declining but it's not making much sense there. So we have we have the ADD, we have the tick, we have two ETFs. We have this. Well, this ETF is in confluence with the spy. It's moving. There's no divergence there. But this was alarming. The true signal for me to look for my short setup was when this happened. We know the narrative of why the market has been running up. It's been going up because of tech. It's not because of banks, the financial sector. It's not because of the, uh, the small cap stocks. It's not because of random uh, cruise ships and airlines and all those, the, the jet ETF and all those things have actually been weighing the market down. It's been tech that's been driving it up. So in other words, if we see any divergences between these two, that should be very concerning. And what ended up happening is as we had the SPY running up at this time, I have my um, crosshairs mirrored across on my chart so you can see the same time frame. We had the SPY broke out and we put in this high right here, which is at 1130. And that's where the Q's put in the high, which is fine. But then we have this sell off. We have this little downtrend happening here. And then what do we get? We get a break in the SPY on volume, which was nice to see. But what ends up happening at that same time, we had this downtrend forming. So this candle right here is the same. This right here is the same time the SPY started breaking out. Where was the NASDAQ? And when the, Q, and when the SPY put in a new high, this is where the NASDAQ was. That's very concerning because the NASDAQ is supposed to be up here. It should not be down here. That bearish divergence is a sign that something is off. The spy is pumping, but it's not necessarily going up because of tech. So what you, what I'm looking for at that time is what's what's going on again at this time. We're looking at this is uh, what time is this, this is 130. We can pull up Apple. We have Apple at the same time around 130. This is pretty concerning. Why is Apple so low? We have Amazon. Amazon is also it's a low. It's a lower high. It doesn't make much sense. We can pull up BA. What's BA doing uh, around this time at 1130? BA is kind of pumping, so it, it, it makes a little sense why why uh, the spy might be putting in new highs. And you can bounce around and look at different stocks. But at the end of the day, we know tech is the reason the spy should be putting in such a such a strong break. So. 
I'm gonna call the bluff on this break and start looking for a short uh, setup. I was actually in this short here on the futures. I was short uh, one ES contract. I gave it a very tight stop because I know this is not the good trade. When you're new to trading, you wanna try and get the, you wanna try and short the top or buy the bottom and while it might seem like that's where the lowest risk is, it's not in this particular case, because again, we were looking at a very bullish day. If you're not able to spot the divergent, the bearish divergences across the board, things are looking very bullish. So it's not safe to, 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 to short the top of the day. You shouldn't actually be looking for that. You want to short, you know, backside weakness. You don't want to short front side strength. By definition, this is still front side strength. We're still putting in higher highs. The moment we get this break of character, and the spy puts in this, wouldn't necessarily call this a capitulation candle here, but we'll say, you know, we poked and then we had a nice wick rejection and then we start selling off. None of this here is necessarily a trade to be taken. Why? Because what are you doing here? What you're, you're just chasing the short, you're, what do you, you can risk off the previous level, but that's not the A plus setup. The moment you see this, your attention can come over to the NASDAQ. Well, actually before, before we go to the NASDAQ, I'll, I wanna show you guys something. If we continue to look for the divergences in the ADD, when the SPY put in this new high, the ADD put in a new low here. That's pretty alarming. That should not necessarily be happening. Again, this doesn't always work out perfectly, but we can see when we had this breakout here, the ADD means there's more stocks that are advancing than are declining. That's cool. And then we get this high here. Okay, so it aligns with around this area. That's fine. But at the end of the day, this high is nowhere near where we kind of opened at the day. The ADD probably should have been, should have been back up here. Again, it's not essentially perfect. It's just being able to spot and identify where things aren't adding up. On a perfectly nice trending update on the SPY, you will see all things trending up. You shouldn't see any sort of bearish divergences across the board. So that's one thing to point out, as well as if we look at the tick at that time, we want to look for these extended levels of these exhaustion levels and we can see here just when the spy started pushing up here what did we get the tick poked here but that was before that was when we had this breakout and then when we have this high a day the tick is only here there's less stocks that ticked up here versus here yet the spy put in a higher day here that's a red flag and that's the type of stuff you want to spot so now identifying that we can make the assessment that tech is weak. Tech was weak yesterday, but that means you don't want to, you can short the spy, you can short, there's different instruments. Again, I'm, I'm a futures options and equities trader. I trade all three. I just go for whatever it looks like it has the, the best, less erratic behavior. Sometimes options looks a little crazy. Sometimes the futures I don't trade well because the, the leverage sometimes might get to my head. Each point on the ES is worth $50, not necessarily going to get into the 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 numbers behind this for this video or maybe i'll save that for the end but what we have here is we had this here to here we now have a trend forming where do you necessarily enter you can enter your short on this backside weakness here which is fair but at the same time has a better way to get an entry within with a trade like this you should fib it out from the high a day to your 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 first you know uh low low your your swing high to your swing low and then a nice level too short off of is this 50 percent retracement i'm a fibonacci retracement trader best my best trades come with come with that because it's again it's a non-discretionary way of trading it's a 50 percent retracement it, and I'm showed I'm shorting backside weakness. That's what I'm looking to short. And confluence here, where if we have this, if we adjust this trend, put it over here, in confluence with this trend. And then if you're a candlestick trader, we get a bearish candlestick. So there's a lot of confluence of things going on here, but it's also in confluence with the divergence in which we were seeing. That's what makes this a good short. The other thing that makes it an A plus short is that now we have a level in which we can risk off of. We can risk, I risk off of the, if I'm shorting at the 50% retracement, I'm going to risk off of 61%, 61.8% retracement. This is essentially where I would look to stop off. So it allows me to have a very tight stop as well as it identifies my PTs. The first PT is going to be the negative 23% retracement. This is VWAP for me here, or I can look to take profit at VWAP. They end up being, this would allow me to take profit just before VWAP. And then the final PT might be the negative 60 one percent retracement now we see what happens yesterday what happens if you miss that entry that trade it doesn't mean like i'm still i'm still trying to remind myself at this time because if i miss the perfect entry usually i'll let the trade just run away because i get i do get a little bit upset that i i seen i identified the trade but i would necessarily i didn't necessarily enter at the perfect time so it messes with my head but one of the things that has helped me as a trader 
uh, identify the next setup, the, the, the best trades will give you multiple setups, which is something you have to repeat yourself. If you're experiencing FOMO or anything like that, tell yourself the trade is not done. It's going to perform. It's going to do something that's going to allow you another entry. What we have here in this case is you can extend the fib. So we had this from here. This is the swing high, swing low is a 50% retracement. What we can do now is we can extend this fib out to here. But this is the three minute time frame, right? So that means between here and here, we have 55 minutes to decide when we're going to enter this trade. If we if we're if we're still waiting for the next beautiful entry, we have from here to here, which is two hours. What do we get? We get another 50% retracement in confluence with a bearish candlestick. We have we have a reversal candlestick forming. We know where we're going to risk off of. We're risking off of this level. Sometimes I might not necessarily just risk off of the 61 because I'll actually scaling at, scale in at the 50% retracement because sometimes the stock goes to the 61 retracement and this might actually be the better entry. So I'll take a piece, I'll enter in here and then I might enter in the, the next piece here with my stop being over a certain candle. So if I'm going to potentially add to a short at the 61 retracement, you can use a candlestick as your stop, but as long as you're identifying where you're risking off of, but then look at where our PTs end up being with a short like this. We're here, you should always look to cover at a double bottom as well as a lower day. If you're shorting, especially if you're shorting above VWAP or if you're shorting you know, a, a stock that is going up and so forth, you do want to cover at lower day. Lower day should always be a PT for a short. And then if anything, you can add on a break of a lower day or you can scale back in on a lower day, but you wanna make sure you pay yourself just above the lower of day break. So that's what this 23% retracement would be giving us here. I mean, FIB would be showing us right here, as well as you would probably want to get out around this type of price action. You don't wanna be involved in that. One key, yeah, I'm, I'm, one thing I really want to point out to you guys is super important. And this is something I've never, I've always, I've read a ton of, uh, of books and stuff like that in the market. And we, we know that volume is key. It's all about volume and price action, which is why I only really use VWAP. I use a couple, I use the one EMA, which is the nine EMA for stocks that are trending also for when to, when to take a stop loss and so forth. But at the end of the day, volume is really what you want to be looking at. And I use, uh, I pay attention to any anomaly, any anomalies in price action throughout the day. So if we get this spike of volume right here in the queues, what I like to do the moment I see any 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 price action like that is I'll draw out a price level around the candle. So we have that is the close. This was the open, and I pay attention to those levels. That's how I usually get my price levels. My support resistance lines are all based around on any time frame. It's based around anomalies in volume. What we can see right here is we get our second confirmation of why this is an area of interest. We can get into the psychology of why a lot of trade, a lot of trades executed here, a lot of people were here. They were under the water here. This is an opportunity for them to get back out at a break even. Yada yada yada. There's all sorts of reasons psychology behind why this is happening. It's not just you know, I think this is going to happen or I, I identify this as like a uh, resistance here. It's no, it's like the volume is telling us a lot of price action occurred right here. We have confluence with this 50% retracement right here. This is an area to be getting short because now we're following the trend. Speaking of trend, we draw this back out right here and that's what we get. So this is becomes an area. Look at that. We have 50% retracement, which is this level. We have this from this volume candle here early in the day and we have the trend. There's no other real, there's no indicators, anything in which we need to look at. We already have the divergence between the tech and spy. We know spy is now starting to reverse around this time. And then all we have to do is just play that trade. And I mean, in, in, in the futures, what this ends up being, this is, I mean, one contract in the NASDAQ yesterday, the NASDAQ from the highs dropped like over 450 points. That's 450 times $20 per contract. So you're talking about, I think that's like 9,000, almost $10,000 on one contract or something like that from a trade, not including if you continue to swing it. As you can see, we get continued downside in the morning of today. This is how you can maximize a nice short without trying to short this front side strength. We've waited. You had two hours to get this set up. And this is actually, this is in, this is an A plus trade. This is an A trade. This is an A plus trade, depending on how you want to grade and, and, and rate your setups. This information right here, this is now, uh, what time is this? This is 1.35, 1 1.30 in the afternoon, Eastern time. We can pull up Apple, how you can use this type of information. What was Apple doing at this time? Right here, 1.30 something. What do we have on Apple? We have a, we have a head and shoulders forming. Here's our 
shoulder, left shoulder. There's our head. Here's our right shoulder and there. And what we have right here, if we go with, this can be considered our neckline, or you can say this is your neckline, however you want to you know, trend it out. That's where a little bit of discretion might come in. But for the most part, here's a pattern. You wanna trade a pattern. We have the signals from the from from our ETFs that are telling us we don't want to be going long tech. You should be looking for short setups. Round here is is a nice setup on this shoulder. Not entirely sure. I didn't trade Apple yesterday. I'm not entirely sure with the Fib show, but here we go. What do we get? 50% retracement on Apple, bearish candle, take the trade. Here's our first PT, here's our second PT. It all ends up aligning. If we look at, you know, Amazon, same time. Amazon we know is can be a beast when you when you nail Amazon correctly, but this is the same time in which we're looking to short. It's no longer just a random short. If we pay attention, here's volume. Volume spiked up here. What do we get? Confluence with that. The same thing. The ETFs are telling us what we what we should be looking for. A trade like this on Amazon, you're talking about this is over 200 and something point drops by by the time the bell rang at the close of the day. 200 two over 200 points in an hour. In an hour and a half, that's that's the six figure trade, depending on your buying power, especially if you're using the power of options. And I'm going to look to to wrap. I mean, I can this this I did my best. Hopefully it is my first video. So I'm not entirely sure about, you know, the length in which I'm going to be making my videos. Ideally, I would love them to be where am I at right now? Like over 20 minutes. I would love them to be significantly shorter, but it is the first video in which I'm doing. Hopefully you guys don't mind that it's too long because there's, there's plenty more in which I can point out for you guys. There's certain things like how to continue and short the next morning because I know a lot of traders today came in with a lot of uh, jitteries and feeling and not understanding like we just dumped so much yesterday. Is the spy going to continue falling? Are we, should we get calls? Should we get puts? Uh, if you're trading options, uh, should I short the night? Like, what do you do? It's as simple. If you're if you're a non-discretionary trader, you use that for your your signal entries and and exits. Here was our fibs from yesterday. If we just extended them out, wait for the first low to be put in for the day. Don't catch that short. Don't catch it. You don't know what's happening here. But what do we get? We get this is the extension from here. It's the same move. And what do we get? We get the first retracement. Where does it line up with the 23% retracement? We're not going to expect the 50% retracement in on the in the first like 15 minutes of the day. That's just a little bit of madness. But in this market, anything can happen. But here's this. So then you just start looking for confluence of things. We pull up. We have what was the ADD doing? That's when we look at what's the tick doing. And then and then and then for for futures, we can look at. Let's go to uh, if we look at we have the ES at 9:30 in the morning. What was happening? We have something. This is the overnight session right here in the ES. A lot of chop, a lot of chop. We broke down just before the market, just before the bell. This is at 8.30 in the morning. We're selling off, selling off. What happens? This is 9.30. We get a nice bounce. My gray, this gray line is VWAP for me on my on my futures chart. What do we get? We get a retracement to VWAP. What time is it? About to be 9.45. 15 minutes into the market open. We usually can expect some sort of reversal or something to happen. It's in confluence, VWAP retracement, ES after it sold off. This is over, this is like 25 points right here on ES. Every point on the ES is $50. So with one contract, someone's up over a thousand dollars, something like that. Big traders probably have five. It's a five thousand dollar little scalp. It's a 10, 15 minute scalp. You're probably gonna take profit. Not to met not to also not to forget the narrative of the whole story. People have been shorting from since yesterday. It's probably going to be some shorts looking to cover at the open because these were monster trades. So what happens with shorts covering, we get a nice little pump, but that doesn't mean that you should be even part of this price action unless you come in identifying that this is potentially a nice dip buy for the market. We get this trade, but then you get the safer one with this short because now we kind of seen, we saw what happened. Buyers came in, you can read the tape, however you want to trade, but this ends up being a confluence area of a short as well aside from feeling like we were going to get a bounce even though there was divergences here video is not about how there was bullish divergence while this is happening it's just about identifying how this ended up being a pretty nice short and again i'll pull up i'll wrap up the video with uh some options so we can see the comparison between the two on the left side i have the calls on the right side i have the puts for the spy this morning this was the first initial 15 minutes of the day how the market ran up and yes it was a nice 100 percent from here to here this now is the uh the puts we have the puts we have the puts at we'll say the short at 9 40 at 9 42 right here at 9 42 
let's just say you wait for confirmation, you can enter these puts. And we're talking about a trade like this now, going long the call, going buying the puts, we're talking about 120 something percent trade in not even 10 minutes, less than 10 minutes that trade would look to unfold. And that's how you can, that's how you can have a nice morning short without even being part of the first 10, 15 minutes of the action. It's waiting to have a setup. And that's hopefully that's what you guys got away from this video is seeing how to read the market internals as well as the di divergences between the ETFs and not being scared being in a trade because you have a setup. Because if you waited for the 50% retracement yesterday, you wouldn't really have been nervous because you would have known you were going to risk off the 61% retracement level. And then I'll show you guys like a couple other uh, shorts that were beautiful. This was the, this right here was the June 23rd short. This is the spy was doing something similar. This is, on, I trade, I trade futures on Ninja Trader. So we had a rising wedge just below resistance, which is beautiful to see. And then I, I, this is how I, this is one of the examples of which of how I journaled. I'll do a video in the future of how I journal pre-market, what I anticipate is going to happen as the market opens just off of levels. And I leave notes and stuff like that for the chart. So when I wake up the next day, I'll put the first retest of this trend was at 9 PM and like just continuing the story in my head, because at the end of the day, there is a narrative behind what's happening with the price action. And this initiated what was a mega drop in the market when a lot of people don't really understand why do we just dump or it's just dumping because it's a resistance. There was a lot of divergences that day as well as pattern. We had a rising wedge and then we had this breakdown. This is again, another one that's happening later in the day. And then, uh, as we can see how I use the fibs here, it was just like fib it out from the lower day to the higher day. We had the 51% retracement. It ends up being in confluence. The 61% PT was also in confluence with this uh, trend line that I had, the resistance and yada, yada, yada. <laughs> and uh, another example, this was the June 10th short for me. I was scalping it at this point because the market was, we were still extremely bullish and it's just showing I saw this shoulder, this head and shoulders pattern and identifying the neckline and where to short and uh we're to short so hopefully this helps again sorry if the video is pretty long but um it's information that i never really i i, I learned you know I, being a trader and being aware of certain things and reading about certain things and seeing different traders uh express certain things but never really being able to piece it all together for me in a video hopefully i did a a, a good job for my first video really showcasing how you can put the pieces together and feel confident in a short setup uh, that would pay <laughs> significant amount of money. First YouTube video again, let me know what you guys think. Leave a comment down below. Don't forget to like, subscribe, share. I'm um, pretty excited about this journey on YouTube and um, I'll be hopefully doing a lot of videos. I can't really promise my frequency of uploads anything yet. I would like to get a couple out a week, but we'll see how that goes. So. Let me know again, guys, what you think down below and uh, don't forget to subscribe and share. See you guys next time.